All right, it's recording. All right, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Welcome back, welcome back, you guys. I'm at the end of the finish line, right? This is electrical design, where we're gonna take everything from what we learned from DC all the way up to now. First thing we wanna do is basically go over everything that y'all received in your email. There we go. We want to receive, we, we want to go over everything that y'all received in your email. Y'all got about three uh, attachments, but a bunch of stuff that we're going to go over. The first five weeks, we're going to do an uh, we're going to do a residential low calculation uh, design project. Okay, I'm going to go through that. I'm going to show exactly what we're going to do, how we're going to break it apart, how we're going to figure out the size of the breaker, the size of the conductor, the size of the uh, grounded conductor, the size of the ground beam conductor, the size of the service conductor, how many breakers, uh, how to actually organize a service panel to what size of your home. We're going to do all of that. So if I'm sounding like I'm sounding right now because I got the recorder on because I'm not used to this. But anyway, though, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. And so without any further ado, let's go ahead and break it down. All right, guys. So electrical design, OK? You guys have an email, a zip file. Did y'all receive a zip file? All right. So this zip file right here, this is y'all library because we have a total of four projects that we're going to do in here. The first one is residential. The uh, the second two, the second two are going to uh, we're gonna do with uh, AutoCAD. Okay, we're gonna do a motor control circuit. All right. But in this library, if you look at on the TV screen, I'm just gonna go through what we have because we're not teaching you how to use AutoCAD, make a circle, make a triangle. No, I already have a library installed for you guys, so you basically can go in and pick and, and basically cut and paste. So let me open up the control panel or the control circuit on AutoCAD. It's gonna take some time. If you don't um, if you don't have uh, well I'm not saying if you don't have, but just bear with me, just look at the TV screen. Everybody should have AutoCAD 23 on their uh, computer. And right now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna show every I uh, every uh, Application right here, like it's for at your disposal. Oh, yeah, with uh, yeah. uh, and this with the whole circuit, with the symbol, etc. And this is for the whole semester, all right? This is for the whole semester that we're going to basically utilize and pick from this uh, this library. Also, in this class, make sure y'all bring y'all uh, your NEC, bring your NEC on a weekly basis. We're going to be going throughout that NEC uh, more than we did in, uh, in the NEC class, OK? that is already labeled all right so when y'all when we get to the actual second project that we do which is going to be about a month or five weeks away you know you got your stop button you got the start button you got the core relay and that's not all right so let me go ahead and open back up the uh the other stuff that we have all right you guys can go over there at your own pace but i just want to show you electrical symbols all right Here's another um, library that you have, okay? If you guys want to design a tram, okay, when we start doing our second project, you have a transformer, okay? Here you have an inductor coil, okay? Speakers, okay, at your disposal. All right, now let me show you something that's going to be beneficial. I'm not going to go through all of them, but y'all will be able to go through it on your own. You have to open up AutoCAD to actually look at these applications that I'm going through, all right, which is actually on the computer too. Now, if you have AutoCAD on your personal computer, that'll work as well. All right, so let me go to residential load calculation. All right, that's an Excel uh, application. All right, 
So what you see on the TV screen is basically the load calculation that's already entered to all you have to do is put the size of the square footage of the home, what appliances you have in your home, and they calculate for you. But guess what though, Mr. Shields is actually going to show you how to do it the old school way. All right, this is basically going to be a reference to see if you get it right. All right, so this right here, I'm going to show you how to use that a little bit later on. It might be later on today or it might be next week. All right, but I'm going to show you how we're going to uh, do load calculations based on the square footage of the home. All right, and I have uh, three of these on Excel in the zip file. Okay, I have. It does the same thing as the other one showed you, all right? But yeah, this right here is basically you put in the size of your square foot of your home, okay? You put the size of the square foot of your home, it tell you what article, article 220.42. 220 is low calculation on residential, churches, uh, elementary school, whatever, whatever you have, all right? But our project is we're gonna be based on a residential home, all right? Let's open up the second. The second, okay. Is this not the same login that we've been using? No. It's your actual login. Yeah, it's your actual login. Whatever your login is to... to, to like my personal one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. yeah. All right, now check a look at this. You have the, uh, the second attachment that I sent you. All right, this right here, gentlemen, you need, you're gonna need to print this out, okay? This right here is our first project with the residential. So let me just go over quickly what it has or what, what the details are. All right, so standard calculation for a single family home, okay? We're gonna go over this together. The size of your square foot of your home, you can find it in uh, table 220.12, but I'm gonna go over how to figure out what, uh, what voltage uh, amps should it be multiplied by, which is three VA, and then you get your, uh, your VA, but we're gonna do all of that. All right, the small appliances and laundry, that's added into it. Apply the demand factors, I'm gonna show you how to decipher what is the correct demand factors. All of the fixed appliance that goes within your home, the dryer, how to calculate it, the heating and uh, AC, the cooking unit, the largest motor, uh, really, when you're dealing with the largest motor, that's basically saying if you have like a sump pump or a well water pump of that nature. But most of your small motors, like your dryer or your or your dishwasher, that goes into fixed appliances. Okay, and then we calculate the the size of how much current is being drawn, and that determines the size of the service conductors that come inside of your service panel. So we'll do all of that, right? This right here is your panel schedule. Okay, let me see if I can rotate this here. Okay, this right here is your panel schedule. A panel schedule generator is basically saying what breaker serves to what inside your home, right? Every electrical circuit, you got a 20 amp circuit breaker for the master bedroom, you have a 30 amp circuit breaker for your dryer, you have a 50 or 40 amp circuit breaker for your AC unit, and you put in the description what it serves, and you also, determine if it's 120 volts or if it's 240 volts, and you determine the VA by multiplying the current uh, of that device, not the circuit breaker. The circuit breaker is a fixed value of what it trips at. The VA is the wattage, right? You determine that by multiplying your current times 120 or if it's a 240 device by 240, all right? Size of the wire gauge, okay? Size of the wire gauge. So this right here is your panel scale. All right, now this is a PDF file. I actually have, this is a, a printout, I'm sorry. I actually have a PDF file, a live file where you can actually click on the, the wire size and then do a drop down and you can select it, all right? But nevertheless, though, this is what that is. Then within this box right here, the notes, notes is basically, hey, what size service panel are you using? What type of service panel? Like different style, is it wind protection? Is it uh, dirt proof, et cetera? Then we're gonna basically fill out in the note section, the size of the grounding, the ground dead, conductor, uh, neutral, et cetera, okay? We'll have fun, all right? Now, this document right here, 
This is a blank document that everybody has. So if you see that our residence at home is gonna be 60 by 30 square foot. And reason why it's blank because everybody is gonna have a custom home. Now let me skip forward. Here's an example. Or oh, let me uh, switch this around, sorry. Here's an example, right? Your home is not gonna look like this. This is only an example, all right? Each room has plugs, each room has a light or a ceiling fan. I'm gonna show you when I pass this out right here, when I pass this document out right here a little bit later, this is our practice. We're basically gonna be practicing. I'm gonna go on the board and actually show you how to do this. This is the practice of our final draft of this. But this right here is basically telling you, hey, you can put you a four-way switch right here, a regular receptacle. These are two outside lights, okay? This right here is basically give you an example, but your final draft of your residential project, of your residential project is gonna be this right here, okay? So you have a blank document. You're gonna have to print that out, all right? Nobody shall look the same, all right? I'm gonna give y'all an idea when we go over this a little bit later this morning, okay? This is our little practice right there. Y'all can have as many copies as y'all want, and also, Make sure you do it in pencil because when you finish the final draft of that, it will be done in pencil. So let me just backtrack. We're not going to use uh, AutoCAD for this uh, project. It's all going to be pencil and paper, residential, sizing, wires, figuring out what you want to put in your home, circuit breaker, X, Y, Z. All right. Okay. This document right here, this document right here is basically telling you the size of a copper conductor. So this is for your service time. So sizing conductors and overcurrent protection. I'll go over that a little bit more later. But basically, this tells you uh, if you got a 15 amp circuit breaker, the size of your uh, conductor is going to be 14 gauge. A 20 amp circuit breaker, 12 gauge. Uh, 12 gauge. 25 to 30, pretty much fine on dryers or whatnot like that. 10 gauge. All right. Now check this one out. I actually got the resource for you. So this right here, and everything that we show, we're gonna go over again in depth. But this is the skim the surface. So in your residential home, a 15 amp breaker, commonly you find on a 15 amp breaker, plugs, switches, anything in the living area. What size wire is gonna be a 14-2, okay? Also what you can find on a 20 amp circuit breaker are plugs and switches in living areas, all right? But look, 30, 40, and 50 amp, they got an X screw. You're not gonna find your living room area or your plugs or your switches on a 30, 40, or 50 amp circuit breaker. No, you're gonna, gonna find it on a 15 to 20. And that's how you read this table right here, okay? So plugs and switches in, in the kitchen, in the laundry, in the bathroom, guess what? It's only gonna be on a 20 amp, but a 12 too. That's how you look at this particular table right here and so forth. They got the microwave, the dishwasher, the refrigerator. So all of this material that you have at your disposal is gonna help y'all put together the final project, uh, not the final project, but the project of the residential at the end of like five weeks. Oven, cooktop, freestanding range, water heater, et cetera, all right? I already explained this right here. This is basically uh, uh, an example of what we're gonna do. And I forgot to mention, right? So on this, this is uh, a big example. You have the symbol. So when you guys go in your laundry area, especially when we do the practice, all right, if you look at your laundry area, you're going to put uh, a duplex uh, receptacle for your dryer, right? So if you look on here, let me blow it up. Okay. There you go, right there. You're going to put a 240 volt, which is a circle with three prongs coming out of it, indicating that it's a 240, which will be the which will be located in your laundry area. And all of the regular receptacles are like this: a circle with two lines coming out. But then you have your GFCI in your laundry area or in what location, like your bathroom or on your kitchen countertops, right? You're gonna put the regular receptacle symbol, but you're gonna put the GFCI uh, initials right by it in whatever area you're serving, like right here. If this is a water closet, you got a regular receptacle, but it's a GFCI, 
okay? That's what we're gonna, we're gonna learn how to practice, how to do that on here before we actually do our final project, okay? Ceiling fan, you got the ceiling fan, or paddle fan, you got a three-way switch, where it's gonna be an S with a three. If, you, if your house or your final project of your residential project has four-way switches, you're gonna have S4, a single pole switch, of course it's a single, I mean, just the letter S, okay? And all of the perforated lines that you see in between each of the switch, basically saying that, hey, S3 is connected to S4, and another S3 is down there controlling that light, okay? So that's what I mean, but I'm gonna show y'all that, like you have your countertop or your stove top. Each end has a GFCI receptacle, all right? All right, so the next sheet that you have, more references. So this right here basically say, hey, when you go in your bathroom, right, whatever you building out or building in your bathroom, right, you have to be mindful, right? This basically has, hey, if you have a bathroom, 210, it says the code, 210.7A1, at least one wall switch control lighting outlet is required. Pretty much is giving you a, uh, an illustration of the bathroom, the numbering, and it's basically saying, hey, go find this in this article, and this is the reason why you should have at least one switch in your uh, bathroom, one switch that controls the light. All right, let's look at another. I'm gonna find where it says, uh, okay, let me see. GFC, how are you? Where are you? All bathrooms, okay, yeah, there we go. 210.8A1. All receptacles must be GFCI protected on a 20 amp circuit, and at least one receptacle must be installed within three inches of the sink, which is a GFCI. Okay, so basically, I just I printed out like an illustration of what you can and what you can't do, or go reference to the NEC to determine how to place that, because when y'all do your final project and I see that y'all have a regular receptacle and they don't have GFCI lettering next to it, that's wrong. And then you say, hey, well, how's that wrong? I got 20 amp circuit breaker for protecting it. And then I'll be like, hey, is your 20 amp circuit breaker, is it a GFCI uh, circuit breaker? Because you can have a, uh, a GFCI circuit breaker too. And you say, no, then I'm saying, hey, it's wrong because the NEC says that it has to be a GFCI protected receptacle or it can be a GFCI uh, circuit breaker, okay, serving that bathroom. But it has to be 20 amp, and then when it's 20 amp, question, what size wire or what size conductor? If it's a 20 amp going to the bathroom, what size wire? Okay, 14. No, yeah. not 14 gate. 12. 12. 12 gate. And that goes back to that uh, exactly, right? right? So when you question yourself, you go back and you look in the bathroom, look at that on the TV, what's a, what size conductor? 12. 12. 20 amp, 12, 2. 12, 2 basically means a hot wire and a neutral. And remember, the grounded does not count. All right? And I have a, the laundry room, okay? The laundry room. So the laundry room is an illustration of what you can. So 210, 70, A1 also says switch lighting outlet required, correct? All right? And the laundry also requires a 20 amp circuit required for laundry receptacle outlets, etc. All right, and more information on what you can put in the laundry. It should be a GFCI, also 20 amp uh, protection. All right, all right. Any questions over the material so far? Okay, so remember, print this out, okay? Print this out, especially this one right here, because you're gonna bring that in next week. Make sure y'all bring in your NEC. Uh, let me see. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna practice and determine how to calculate our residential homes and figure out what is the, elect the general electrical load. When you hear the term general electric uh, calculation, basically what that means is all of the lights and all of the, uh, 
the plug, okay? Not including the dryer, not including the fixed appliances. That is not a part of the general electrical, uh, general electric utilization load, which is lights and plug. That's what we're about to determine right now, all right? So, so if we look at uh, on the TV screen, Article 220, branch circuit feeder and service load calculation. All right, so let's see. So we're gonna go to table 220.12, general lighting loads by occupancy, right? If you did a bank in America, voltage amperes by square footage, we would use three and a half square feet. If we did an auditorium, we would multiply or utilize one VA per square foot. But we're dealing with dwelling unit. Dwelling unit is home. So if you look at dwelling unit, dwelling units basically said, hey, you're gonna multiply your VA by three, uh, I'm sorry, you're gonna multiply three VA by the square footage that, that you calculate, and then some, okay? All right, so first thing we do is figure out what our square foot is. So right now we have a 40 square foot, a 40 by 27 square foot home. All right, so the way we're gonna do that is multiply 40 times, times 27, all right? One of you mathematicians give me the answer. Forty by twenty-seven. Yeah, which is about thousand, thousand and eight. Yeah, yeah. thousand and eight equals a thousand to multiply three, three VA, three VA, which is voltage and peers by the square foot of your home to determine uh, how much uh, current is gonna be utilized, okay? So you see that right there, it says voltage and peer per square foot. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna multiply that number, 1,080, okay? times three VA. That's gonna determine in this home how much wattage is potentially or could be used if you turn all of the light, turn all of, or utilize all of the plug. That's basically what that is. But there's a demand factor that goes into that. And that's the one thing that we have to make sure that we understand is the demand factor, how to apply that. So yes, electrical engineers they sit down and they figure out, okay, for this uh, new residential development that we're doing, we're gonna basically take all of the cookie cutter 1,080 square foot homes and we're gonna multiply. Once you do one of them, then you can double up on these homes. And then you know you got the, the estate home, which probably be 2,500 square foot. You do the same thing, you multiply that, so you don't have to continuously do it. So like in my residential neighborhood, there are a total of four different homes that you can choose from. Yeah. DR, uh, DR Horton, right? Anyway, but once they do the calculation for one and for, for the rest of them, it's gonna be different. And then all they gotta do is duplicate those numbers and whatnot like that. But it's a, a process of doing this to understand how to do this as an electric engineer, which is very, very, very lucrative if you go down this path. But anyway, 1,080 square foot times three VA. Yes, it's going to be 32, 3240. And what is that number again? That number right there, 3240, is the potential wattage, right? VA, voltage and ampere. We know that voltage and ampere is similar as watts, right? So that's the wattage of the general lighting load. The general lighting load, which is the receptacles and the lights. All right, so let's write that down. All right, so the general lighting, all right, 
All right, so that's not the final number. There's a process to this. Now, let's go back into Article 220. Let's look at table 220.42 on the TV screen. It says, if you, use, if you are figuring out the, the lighting load demand factor, like I said earlier, the lighting load demand factor in the dwelling unit, which is your home, the first 3,000 is at a hundred percent, okay? Then from 3,001 to 120 is at 35 percent. Okay, then if you have anything over 120, there's that 25%. Let me explain this here, or let me just go through the rigmarole so y'all can understand this. All right, so right now we're over, we are over 3,000, right? So the first 3,000, How many voltages do we have over uh, after 3,000? 240, right? Well, yeah. We have 240 volts remaining. So with 240 volts remaining, we're going to take 240 and we're going to multiply it by 35%. Okay, so since we don't have anything over 120, so we'll have to worry about 25. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add these two, okay? Add these two. We're going to take 3,000 plus 84, which is going to give us 3,084. But before I continue, let's look back into our NEC, because the NEC basically gives you an example. All right? So I'm going to go into the back of the NEC. Right now, I am on page 75. I gotta remember that. I wanna go into the example. All right. Let's take a look at this. The dwelling unit, for example, D1, the dwelling unit has a floor area of 1,500 square foot uh, for the unfinished cellar, not exactly for further use, uh, future use. Unfinished attic and open porch. Appliances are 12, a 12 kW range and a 5.5 kW 240 dry. Assume the range in the dry rating is equivalent to KVA rating in accordance with 220.54 and 220.55. But anyway, okay, so you see what they did was they took the value of the square foot of the home, ours is 1,080, okay, and they multiplied it by 3 VA, which gave them 4,500, okay. Now, the general lighting load, okay, what they did was basically took 4,500 and divided by 120. That basically is saying that, hey, at least 38 amps is gonna be distributed throughout your potential light and your potential plug, all right? I didn't do that part right there just yet, okay? What I wanna show you is actually the actual general light, okay? So our general lighting was 3240, okay? There's this 4,500. So let's skip to this right here. 3,000, the first 3,000 is at 100%, okay, which is this right here. All right? Now, they take him, hold on, let me see. Okay. I gotta add that in, so I'm over here jumping the gun already. All right, let me go back. General lighting, okay, 30,000. Okay, small appliances. 
you know, I, I, I skipped number two. I should have been going by this one. My bad. So let me retract. All right. So small appliances. All right. Small appliance is not a part of the general lighting and receptacle. Okay. Your small appliances are going to be your laundry. Okay. And let's look at 220.52a. Let's see what 220.52a says. Small appliances and laundry load in that house or dwelling unit. In each dwelling unit, the load shall be calculated at 1500 BA for each two hour small appliances brand circuit as covered uh, by 210.11C1, where the load is subdivided through two or more feeders. The calculated load for each shall include not less than 1500 volt amperes for each two small or uh, two small. Uh, appliance brand circuit. These loads shall be permitted to be included with general lighting and subjected to the demand factor. Okay, so they're basically saying, hey, when you calculate this, minimum of 1500. Now, small appliances, they're going to be within the kitchen. Okay, your small appliances are going to be established in the kitchen. Okay, so 1500. So 1500 on top of this number right here is what we got to add, but I'm not done yet. Okay, and I also got to take into account the laundry load. A load not less than 1500 amperes shall be included for each two wire, hot and neutral, laundry brand circuit installed covered by 210.11C2. This load shall be permitted to be included with the general lighting load and shall be subjected to the demand factors provided in the table 220.42. Okay, all right, so I'm, don't worry about appliance load. We're gonna get to appliance load, but we gotta figure out the general lighting load. Okay, so by reading that, what is it stating? It's stating that, hey, whatever you calculate of your square foot home by 3VA, which we got 3240, you also gotta take an account for the laundry, which is 1500, and the small appliances, which is also 1500, which combines uh, 3000, okay? So let me write that in. Okay, I know I was forgetting something. It's been a long time since I did it, but nevertheless, we're gonna be on the right track. All right, so, okay, small appliance. Laundry. So, what we're gonna do now is combine, so let me go back to the actual example.
So our small appliances, we have 1,500, and our laundry, we have 1,500, okay? So we got 32, 40, 1,500, okay, and 1,500. 1,500 for the laundry, 1,500 for small appliances, and the 3240 is for the general lighting. All right. <clears throat> so now what we're going to do is we're going to add all of these together. Okay. So are we using 3240 or are we using we, 30 we add all of the, the we're, we're going to apply the demand factors. But we're using 3240 plus 1500. So that's what? 3000. That's going to be what? 6000. 470. Say that again? 470. Uh, uh, three, so this is 3,000, 3,000 plus 3,240, 6,000. So, so what about the, the whole 3,000 at 100%? Yeah, we're, we're going to apply that. Yeah, that's what I said. I, I went, when I did that, I was oh, that's, that I was, was jumping the gun. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, I was jumping so, the gun. I'm, I'm okay. okay, all right, so. I got another question. So, yeah, go ahead. So in 240.52 it says in each dwelling unit the load shall be calculated at 1500 volt amperes for each two wire small appliance brick circuit. So are we just saying that in this we have a, a, a washing machine? No, the washing dryer? machine, the washing machine, that's uh that's gonna be inside the laundry. So the right. reason why the laundry has to be a 12 gauge 20 amp because it's serving a washing machine, which is a small appliance motor. It has to be bigger. But reason why I pause, I gave a, a, a small pause, is because if you look at this here, they have two circuits. So 15 times two is 3,000. Okay, in the NEC, it states, I think in the 2020, but they upgraded to where it has to be at least two small circuit, two circuits within the kitchen area that's determined as a small plant. But in the NEC that I just read, you said you saw that it said at least have to have one uh, small plant, which is represented at 1,500. But here on the example they gave a 3,000, you would think that it would be 1,500, but this is 3,000. That tells me there's two. Now let me give my, let me give my fact check on here. So give me a minute. And we just want to give y'all a fact check so we can determine as a class as a whole. Because I don't want to confuse y'all. I want to fact check, and y'all can also use help uh, chime in. I'm gonna uh, pull up something. Give me a second. Okay, but let me erase this part right here, though. Let me erase this here because this right here is not right. Okay. All right. I'll pull something up real quick. Yeah, I was just wondering if that if they were counting like the laundry room as a whole and the kitchen as a whole for a small appliance. And well, we're gonna, I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna get back to that. All right, <clears throat> so I'm surprised y'all don't have this. I didn't even put this into y'all kit, into y'all uh, file, zip file. So I'm gonna print this one out too. All right, anyway, small appliance and laundry circuit. All right, 220.82B2. It says, all right, each home, in parentheses, each home must have a minimum of two 20 amp small appliance circuits serving the kitchen and the dining area and at least 120 amp to supply the laundry. So that's a total of three right there. Now, 
Take that. Don't look at this number here, number four. Look at this here. It says each home must have a minimum of two 20 amp small appliance circuits serving the kitchen and the dining uh, area receptacles and at least one 20 amp for the laundry. The total minimum number of circuits shall for these uh, receptacles will always be three. Okay? The more circuits are provided, the number of circuits provided must be used. So, with that being said, this goes back to this right here. Small appliance and laundry. Remember in the NEC we read that it was 1500 but it also states that at least you have to have at least two. So two times 1500 is 3000 and then we have the laundry, which is 1500 Does that make sense of what it's saying in the uh, NEC code book? Okay. Basically, we're taking the general lighting, which is lights and receptacle, taking that number, our number is 3240, because we multiply 1080 times 3VA, gave us 3240, okay? Now we gotta accommodate for the small appliance. It said two, right? So two times 1500 gives us 3000, so we're gonna have two of them. So, right? Let me go ahead and make this change right here. Anybody disagree? All right, I wanna make sure we all on one accord. All right, so 3,000, okay. All right, and laundry, 1,500. So now we have 6,240 plus 1,000 is 7,240, 7,740, is that right? Four, yeah. seven, yep. All right, so we have a total of 7,740 voltage amperes or watts, right? Now we apply our demand factors of what you see right here. The first three, that 100%, then I'm gonna take my 7,740 minus it by the 100% three, uh, the 100%, which is 3,000, and then I'm gonna take whatever that value is and multiply it by 35%. Let's do that there, okay? So. 7,000, okay, 740 VA, okay, we're going to minus the 100% of 3,000, okay, so 3,000, this is the demand factor, we're not utilizing all of the 7,740, you're not going to have all the lights on, all of the plugs, no, that's why the demand factor is placed in the NEC because engineers know that, hey, the home owner and the family is not gonna consume all of the electrical power at once. You're not gonna have your dryer and your oven and your microwave and your toaster and your coffee make all of at one time, all right? So, so 7,740 minus 3,000 is 4,740, okay? Okay, so now we have 7,000, okay, so 7,000, I'm sorry, 4,740 is this value right here. We're going to multiply that number now, 4,740 times 35%. 1659. Okay, thank you. Okay, at 35% is... 1659 VA. All right. Now, according to our example here, all right. So now, we have 3,000. Okay. So we have 3,000, which is 100%. Our 35% value is 1659. All right. So now we're going to take the 100% value, which is 3,000. Okay. Because it tells you the first 100, the first 3,000 is 100%. So we're gonna take, okay, let me, uh, okay, 3,000. Okay. All right, so if you look at this here, gentlemen, you're taking your 3,000, which is 100% value, okay, and then you're taking the 35% value, which we calculated to be 1,659, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna add that up together, okay? 
So 3,000 plus 1,069 is 4,059 DA. So our general lighting load for our plug, I'm sorry, for our, our lights and our plugs and also for the laundry and for the small appliances is 4,659. Now let's figure out if we did it right. So right now, we're gonna go and check on that Excel spreadsheet. The Excel spreadsheet does it for us. But right now I'm showing you how to do it the old fashioned way before they had Microsoft Excel and all that other stuff. All right, so let's see if we about right. So right now we only, we're not doing no laundry. We're not, I'm sorry, we're not doing no dryer. We're not doing no fixed appliances. We're not doing none of the extra stuff. Right now we just wanna see if our general lighting along with our laundry and our small appliances serves us right or what we calculate. Yes, sir. Uh, air conditioning, is that covered under? Later, later, later. later. We're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna cover that. But right now, I just wanna make sure we understand how to do this, and then the other stuff is gonna fall in suit because we're gonna know how to do it. We gotta get savvy with it first, and then we can progress. It's a step right, that's why I said today's gonna be a long day. All right, so now, let's go to our Excel spreadsheet. Okay, what's your spread? Oh, uh, it, it, it don't. I'm using this one right here. I mean, you could, well, I'm using this one, it's more colorful. All right, so let's see here. All right, this is a 2017 dwelling unit, electric service, feeder, et cetera, blah, 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 blah. All right. All right, so let's see. Oh, what does it say? Okay. All right. So our floor area, and it tell you, when you hover over it, it tells you, hey, 220.12, lighting low for a specific occupancy, right? Anyway. We have a total of 1,080. Enter. Okay. So look at that. It says 3240. So we're on the right track right now. 3240. All right. Good, 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 good. All right. Small appliances. All right. Huh? Put it on the front porch. Yeah, yeah. Put it on the front Yeah. 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 Number of small appliances. We determined that we have a total of three. Two small appliances. Is it three or two? No, no, I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I'm, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, two. So put in two, okay, for small appliances and then for the laundry. Put in one, okay? Check this out. Look at that number right there. What'd that say? 4,659, everybody see that? Well, let me, let me make it bigger, let me make it bigger so y'all can't see. Okay. Y'all see it? All right, fellas, so look at that. We on the right track. We're doing it the old fashioned way. 4,659, okay? 4,659, okay? Now, when y'all do y'all residential, when y'all do y'all custom residence, y'all can use this here. But right now, I'm showing you how to do everything from scratch so we know how to do it. We didn't put nothing in. We didn't put no clothes dryers or none of that. That's a whole nother gamut of knowing what to do going to the city. It's going to take a lot. So we're going to spend about two weeks doing this right here. I'm not going to spend all day trying to cram in. All right, let's go to the dryer. Let's go there. Oh, it's going to take a while. Anyway, all right. So y'all see what we did, right? Everybody good? Everybody's feeling confident? Okay, does anybody not understand how we even get to this? Because I can repeat this, okay? Because the two things I want to cover today before we roll out of here is putting regular plugs in, we're gonna figure that out, and then making sure we understand the first part of the general lighting loads and the two, two appliances and the laundry, which is three, all right? So who's not sure about this first part? I'm serious, because after week two, y'all on your own, I'm a Cadillac. Okay, I'm gonna spend two weeks, two full days, making sure we understand it. Then the third, fourth, fifth week, y'all gonna be doing your own thing, and I'm gonna be helping tidbits. All right. 
So I guess somebody said, somebody did say, let's do another one, right? Right, all right, let's do another one. All right, so to understand this, before we not even touching putting plugs in, we're gonna do another one, all right? We're gonna do another one. So let's say our home is 4,500 square foot. Okay, well, I'm sorry, 45 square foot. And the, I must be erased again. All right. Yeah, that was 27. It was what, 27? Yeah, I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna put 32 this time. All right, 32 feet. All right, 14. So now, let me erase all of this here. So I'm gonna erase this here. All right, I'm gonna leave GL, that's for general lighting. Small appliances, we know small appliances is two, so I'm gonna leave it up here. So I'm gonna make this three thousand. All right, now, because we know it's at least two, 15 times two is three, so 3,000. All right, can we erase him? Okay, let me erase this. What's the first order of business, gentlemen? What are we gonna do? Square footage. Square yes. Footage. We're gonna take 45 and multiply it by 32. 1440. Thank you, sir. All right, so general lighting is 1440. What's the uh, 100% though? Three, what, what, what value? Let's, let's, let's. 3,000. And you go 3,000. 3,000. So I know y'all don't have NEC book because I've got to tell y'all, but we're going to use that NEC real hard next week. All right. So we're using it hard right now too, as well. All right. So what we're going to do is take the first 3,000 of 8820, right? So we're going to take 3,000. Okay. BA at 100%. Which is 3,000. Okay? And then what we're gonna do is subtract the 80, say it again? We're gonna subtract 8820 from 3,000. What'd you say? It's what? 5820. Yes, 5820. 5820, 20, now we multiply that by what, Mr. Lopez? About 35%. Yes. 35%. Okay. All right. And. Say it again. 2037. Yeah, 20,000? 2037. Oh, 3037. 2000. 2000. Okay, 2037. My bad. 2037. Okay. V8. V8. Now, 
What's the thing? What do we do now? Gotta add it up. Gotta add it up. 5,037 VA. Let's see if we're right. Let's see if we on the right side. Let's see if we're confident in what we're doing. We are correct. That's what I got. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me see. So our square foot of our home is 4320. Oh, no, 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 no. It's one, no, it's 1440. That's going to erase that. See? It's confusing everybody. Confusing myself. Okay. All right. 4532 gave us 1440. Okay. There we go. 5,000. So that's for general lighting, two small appliances, and one lunch. All right. Now, the other stuff that we're going to cover next week, I'm not done yet, but we're going to go over the uh, how to put stuff in on the house. All right, we're going to only just do plugs, which is general lighting. We're not going to do the other stuff. We're going to do plugs and switches, go to this light, how many lights we want, how many fans we want. But anyway, so what we have here is the general lighting, two small appliances, and the laundry. All right, so next week, we're gonna do the uh, we're gonna do the clothes dryer. We're gonna do the, the cooking uh, range, uh, the, you know the stove top, and we're gonna do the fixed appliances and we're gonna do the AC. And we're gonna apply everything else. So starting next week, we're gonna do everything, and then we're gonna determine what our service cable size is gonna be. Is it gonna be a two watt, one watt, one gauge? Uh, what size circuit breaker for the main breaker panel? We're gonna do all that next week. All right. Now, let's see. Hey. All right, now, so the next phase of what we're going to do, we're going to hold off on the air conditioning, we're going to hold off on the stove, the dryer, all of the heavy duty and all of these fixed appliances we're going to do next week, all right? But now, we're going to go to our next phase. Our next phase is where we're going to place all of our plug receptacles and all of our lights and switches that control the lights in this practice uh, square footage home that we have, all right? So that's what we're gonna do now. So, the symbols, okay, let me draw the symbols for what we're gonna have. So, we have regular receptacle, a duplex receptacle, We have a 240, 240 volt uh, receptacle. You know that's gonna go into the laundry or it might go to your stove, okay? Or if you have a gas stove, you won't need that, but if you have an electric stove, you'll need a 240, okay? You have your lights. Single pole switch, single pole. This right here is a three way switch, and this right here is a four way. That's all we're gonna do. We're gonna just basically put the plug and also a GFCI plug. So let me write that down GFCI. You have to put GFCIs to differentiate from a regular duplex receptor. All right, so let's see here. So you're designing what you want your customer to have or what you think it should be best for the, uh, the electrical layout for this floor pan. So we got our front and we have our rear. All right, so let's see here. So this is what you guys, you chime in too, all right, and you can help out. So let's start off first with the front, right? Of course, you're gonna have a front porch light, right? All right, so the front porch light is gonna be right here. And you wanna have a switch that controls that front porch light, right? So you probably would put it like right here. 
all right? And you want to put the perforated lines saying that this controls this, all right? Now, plug receptacles. We all have plug receptacles, right, in our hallways, right? So I will put a plug receptacle on, uh, right here. I'll put one right here on that wall, OK? And I'll probably put one, let me just give you an idea. You can, yours can be different, but y'all get an idea. Put one right here. All right. Now, let's start off in the master bedroom, right? So in the master bedroom, you know they're going to have a ceiling fan, right? So I got to put the ceiling fan on there. So let me go ahead and put that some ceiling fan with, I know some of y'all is probably hard to see what it is. Sorry about that. It's just, it's you can look on this video. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. All right, so the ceiling fan, right? That's a similar for a ceiling fan. So the master bedroom, do y'all want to have a ceiling So let me tell you this. When I purchased my home, this is the experience. When I purchased my home in uh, DR, from DR Hardin back in 2019, none of the rooms had ceiling fans in there. We were like, nah, we want ceiling fans in each one of our rooms. So as an electrician or a master electrician, you can figure out if you want to put a ceiling fan or if not, depending on if the customer wants. But you're going to take the less, you're going to take the less expensive route, right? So you know if you purchase a ceiling fan without even the customer telling you, hey, I want a ceiling fan, you're going to be spending more money. But put the cheapest thing that you can. And yeah, I did say cheapest, but as an electrician, mass electrician, or electric engineer, you want to save the company money. So what would y'all do? Would y'all put a ceiling fan or just a regular light to determine what, what the customer want? What would y'all do? I'd put a ceiling fan. Yeah, put yeah, a ceiling, put a ceiling fan, fan, right? Yeah. All right. That brings up the price of the home, so they have to pay more money. That's I'd what you do. Pissed. I didn't have one. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So we're going to put a ceiling fan. Now, the, the circle in the middle is a light. It's the light, OK? Ceiling fan with a light. All right. So you put ceiling fan. Okay. Now, there we go. So, do you want to put two separate switches? And this is what y'all gonna do when y'all do y'all find the drawer. Do you want to put two separate switches, or do you want to put one switch and two drawstrings? So you figure that out, right? The ones that I installed in my house, I went to the wire and I have two switches on the wall because I got a DR ordinate that has two switches. Yeah. But the fans up bottom, looking at them, I'm like, it doesn't have a blue and a black wire. It has one wire. And it controls from a remote, so yep. you can't use both switches. So in my, I have a, uh, I have two, I have two switches on the wall too. But right. in older homes, you have like one switch, and then you have one wire that's coming from the attic that's going to the uh, light, and then one going to the fan. But the drawstring is pulling. You know, you can control the fan or you can control it. But they have a switch on the wall that's basically turn off all of it. Then you can control it. Yeah. Them. Yeah. So. We knew, we 2023, let's go ahead and put two switches on there, right? So, what you're gonna do, gentlemen, all right, you're gonna put S for single pole, two single pole switches right next to each other. One is going to the fan, and they're both going to the same thing. But in your notes, you'll put, uh, you know, double uh, single pole switch, one for light, one for fan. Okay. Now we're still in the master uh, bedroom, all right? Put a receptacle, right? Now the EDC states that so many uh, feet apart that you can have, a, so if a wall is like, uh, I think it's like 12 foot or 16, six foot or 12 foot, but I forget, all right? You at least wanna have, if it's a 12 foot gap? I think it's six. Is it a minimum or a maximum? Is, is, is uh, the maximum. Like how many feet can you go without having another receptacle? I think it may be 12. It's in there, but I don't want to get stuck trying to on camera. I don't want to get stuck. But for the sake of this right here, we're gonna put we're gonna put one on each wall. Okay, as long as you have one on each wall. But then again, when you do an actual uh, inspection or you know, when the, the electrical inspector they say, hey, this is like uh, six foot or 12 foot, you're gonna need to have a double another receptacle because you don't want to go that far uh, without having. Uh, but nevertheless, it's in the EDC, but we'll get back to that next week. I don't want to get stuck. All right, so we're going to put a two where your <coughs> beds are going to go, so you have one for each nightstand. Say it again. 
I put two on wherever your headboard's going to go, so you have a receptacle. Either side. Stand. Yeah, yeah, and that's where that that's where that comes into play. It, All right. So, that, so that's, come on, talk. Is come that on. on each wall? There's a there, that that set distance, or is that you start at one end and you just work your way around? Yeah, it's, it's uh working your way around. Okay, because corners do apply to that rule. I gotta go find it, but I just want to continue on this. So now, in yeah, your bedroom, right? You can put that right. So you can you can double up and put two. Receptacle if your head boy's gonna be on that, right? You can do that. But for the sake of this class right here, I'm just gonna put one on one wall, on each wall. All right, all right. And then I'm gonna put one right here. All right. Now, since we are right here in the front, let's go ahead and knock out this bedroom, right? Bedroom number one. Same thing. Y'all want a fan or y'all want a regular light? All right. It's up to y'all. All right. So this right here, I'm going to put a ceiling fan as well. I like, all right, put S, S. Single post switch for the light, single post switch for the fan. All right, I'm gonna put a receptacle on each wall. All right, back to back. Okay. All right, let's go into the bath and the laundry. Okay, now. You already know that it is required to have a what? GFCI. GFCI. Guess what? They back to back. So guess what? I'm gonna put the GFCI plug right here, and I'm also put the GFCI plug right here. All right. So the bathroom is only required to have one plug. Majority of bathroom only has one plug. Sometimes a big bathroom they have two plugs by the sink. But in this small little small home, we're gonna put the GFCI right here. G L C uh, all right, then I'm gonna put it in the laundry room. I'm gonna put it adjacent. Same thing. G L C I. Now this is separate from the outlet for the, the two forty. He's talking about the two forty. Yeah, then uh, we're we'll gonna get the, you talking about the two forty. Yeah, yeah, for the actual for the laundry. Yeah, for, for laundry. Yeah, we'll, we'll put that in there. Yeah, it's gonna be separate. Yes, you do not want to put the the laundry on the same GFCI because that's just the twenty out. Your laundry, that's what we're gonna do it. We're gonna actually go over what size uh, dryer can go in there, but we're also gonna we're gonna install the uh, the 240 receptacle for the dryer. But we're not gonna do the laundry because you might get an 8,000 watt laundry. I mean dryer, you might get a 10,000 uh, watt dryer. But the low calculation, we're gonna figure that out next week. But for the purpose of the plug 240, we're gonna do that now. All right. So since we're in there, let's go ahead and put that in there. So the dryer plug is going to go. With three lines. All right. And then, hey, you know what? Let's throw in another plug inside of the laundry. Because normally you have about three plugs in the laundry for your washing machine and you ironing clothes or whatever you're doing in there, right? So I put the dryer plug right here. I'm going to put another plug right here and label it as GFCI. And put a light. Thing? Yes, yes, yes. Would it be another GFCI plug, or would it just be on the same circuit? It'll be on the same circuit, but you still it, it's. You know what? Would it just be a standard plug just together? All yeah, yeah. It'll be a standard plug, but it'll be protected. So when you do so that, there, you gotta uh, you gotta put the perforated line right here. All right, saying that this plug is protecting the GFCI plug is the master over that receptor. Yes, you can do that. You can do that, or if you got a lot of money, you can put another GFCI plug in there, because GFCIs are pricey, $27. You wanna go to the most economically feasible route when you start. So yes, you can put a regular plug that costs about seven bucks, or you can put another GFCI plug, but that $7 plug, you can basically make it be protected by that main so, GFCI plug. So, yeah, I, uh, I went on a ride along with the residential company, and what they would typically do 
is put a GFCI at the very beginning of the circuit so everything following would trip. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely. Good. And that, you can do it that way. That's the cheapest route that I've yes, sir. seen. Yep. Yes, sir. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it that way. Regular receptacle play, we have to indicate it that it is being protected. And we have to put aside, of course, that all of the laundry receptacles of the, of the GFCI are protected what of that GFCI. Is that 240 volt going to be connected no. with that or no? No, it's not. Uh -uh. Is there a limit to how big of an area or how many plugs can be protected under one GFCI? Like some of the, some of the homes that I've yeah, worked on in the past, yeah. they've got, I mean, multi-million dollar homes. And, and I'm glad you brought that up. So when we get to this, like once I put all of the plugs in here, I'm going to show you in the book, but all receptacles are calculated at 180 dA, which is 180 watts. So therefore, since you know that value that I just told you, now you're going to have to figure out how many receptacles can be applied on the GFCR or how many receptacles can be placed on a 15 or a 20 amp circuit breaker of that number of 108. We're going to go to it, but don't jump the court. I mean, don't jump the gun yet. It's a lot that we got to unpack, like I said this morning. Whew. Anyway, all right. <coughs> all right, so now, okay, let's put a light. Okay, we're going to put a light. We ain't put no fan in here. We're going to put a single pole switch in a regular light. Okay? In the laundry room? He said, I want a fan. Yeah. <laughs> exhaust fan. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you know, I didn't even put oh, the exhaust fan. Exhaust fan. And that's something that I went over last semester, all the semesters, but let me see. Yeah, got to put it in the exhaust fan. Got to do that. So, yes, exhaust fan. This is the exhaust fan. Okay, I'm going to put a little square right here with a, yeah, this right here is the exhaust fan. So, we're going to put a light in the bathroom, too. Huh? We're going to put a light in the bathroom, too. Yeah, I did and then the exhaust fan. Exhaust fan. Yeah. Okay, so the exhaust fan is a little, this little square with the little circle right here. It's probably something different on uh, on the paper. Okay. Forgot about the exhaust fan. All right. And a, and a light. Okay. Let me erase this bath board so I can have some more room. Single pole switch, single pole switch, one for the fan, one for the light. Okay. All right. Exhaust fan in the laundry, yes. Exhaust fan in the laundry because the dryer runs, yeah. So it's humid in there, right? So you want to put an exhaust fan in here. All right, let's put the exhaust fan right here by the 240 dryer. All right. Did you also put one in the bathroom? Yes, I put one right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So now we got the front part covered. Okay. Hallway. We ain't got no light in the hallway. All right. We want lights in the hallway, right? So since this is a long hallway, let's make it a three. We can put two lights. We can put a light right here at the front entrance. Right, one right here in the middle, and one right here. That sounds about right, right? Y'all want to do it like that? We yeah. can. All right. So, let's put two, three lights. One, two, okay, and three. But guess what, we ain't gonna use a single pole switch because when you're coming through the front door, you wanna be able to put a three-way switch. I'm sorry, uh, you wanna be able to turn it off from here, and then when you go into the kitchen, you wanna turn it off or not. Now, Let's say this here. Do y'all want the three-way switch to be here as soon as you come in or right here when you come out of your master bedroom? I said walk through the door. Yeah. Right right yep. So the three-way switch, you got to put the S3. All right. All right. Now that right there has to be connected to S3. Let's put S3 right here. These two three-way switches control these lights right here. Do you go from two switch or do yep. you like link them together? Yep. This is it right here. It's all cluttered and everything, but we go manually. But yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. All right. 
So we got three lights in the hallway, right? Got one plug. Ah, let me tell you about it. Yeah, that's enough. That's for the plug. I'm gonna believe that idea. All right, let's go to bedroom two. This is uh mother-in-law's bedroom right here. This is you know a guest bedroom. So we're gonna keep it standard. We're gonna put a switch right here and we're gonna put a light. Okay, they guess. They can get a little rotational fan if they want to work from home. All right, let's put a plug receptacle on each wall. All right, light, let me put that as a light. All right, bedroom two, get bedroom boom. All right, so now, the kitchen, all right? The kitchen has a, a GFCI. It's gonna have a GFCI on the backsplash or on the countertop, okay? Then you're gonna have regular plug receptacles. All right, let's see here. So, in my home, I don't have a 240 uh, oven. No, I'm lying, I'm lying. Yeah, I do, of course, yeah, I do. Anyway. 240, I have a, two, the oven is 240, but the stove, I know it's gas. I, I'm just sitting here lying to you guys. I have a gas oven and a gas stove at my home, and it's operated off of 120. But old school homes have electric. Most of the stuff is gas, right? I don't know what y'all have, but this is where you determine if you're gonna put a 120, which is gonna be for the clock, the light for the stove, or the oven, and then everything else gonna run off the gas, right? So that's what you'll be able to determine. So since this is a new wave or new age, we're just gonna leave it at 120. All right, but these plugs right here, let's say this right here, this is gonna be the countertop. I'm not drawing countertop, kitchen, kitchenette stuff. We're gonna put our GFCI, we're gonna put a GFCI here. Okay, we're gonna put the word GFCI. All right, and then we'll put another plug that's protected on the GFCI. We need the uh you need to drop a plug that goes to a single pole switch that goes for your garbage disposal. And that's on the uh, that's on your that's on your, your final graph. Yeah. Yeah, that's on, yeah. Now, what you just said is correct, right? But for this purpose is just to get the general idea for the uh, for the yeah. lights and the plug. Alright? But yes, when y'all do what he just said, what Mr. John just said, when y'all do your final graph on that more complex diagram that y'all have. If y'all want to put the disposal or extra stuff for the uh, trash compactor, then you do those things like that. Yes, sir. Would that be covered under that small, those two small appliance uh, loads for the kitchen? Yes. Anything in the kitchen is going to be too small. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you still want to put a GFC out because that's next to the sink. I'm uh, assuming that the sink is going to be right here. Well, yeah, sink might be right here. But this right here is going to be for my sink. I, I should have probably spread that apart. But y'all get the idea. All right. All right. We're going to have five weeks to design this whole thing mm -hmm. and the first project for the sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Then we come up, we do our own layout and everything for the house, just basic layout like that. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so based on what you're asking, right? So, let me just explain. Uh, let me go to here. Yeah. No, not that. Oh, y'all yeah, see this right here? Remember, I said it's a printout. This is a PDF form where you can actually go in there and actually <laughs> drop down right here. But when y'all do your final project, instead of having that printout of the panel schedule, I'm gonna have y'all do it from here so it can be nice and neat. Anyway, to go back to what you're saying, Mr. Jones, on this particular document right here, let me flip him around. So the layout's given to us. Yes, the layout is given to you, but you can pick and choose if you want. I mean, everybody should be different. Nobody should be the same. Okay, y'all can y'all can jump ideas off of each other, of course. All right, but the layout is already given to y'all. But you know, it's up to you all to figure out if you want three plugs, two plugs, a ceiling fan, no ceiling fan, stuff like that. Okay. All right. Continue on. All right. So in our kitchen, we are going to have at least. Let me, write, let me erase this here. We know that's the kitchen. All right, let's have four lights, okay? Four recess lights. These are recess, recess lights anyway. All right, so we're gonna have four lights in a corner, of each corner. Okay, 
S1 or S. The reason why I circle this one back around because it's all connected. All right. Like, uh, I'm just go ahead. I'm just wondering, do we need to draw another page for like for the details? Like, so if you you don't want a blue yeah. page, you go through. Yes, sir. You have your electrical, which is just your your main, and you have detail a details page that will show you. Yes, sir. So little stuff. On. Do, do all that too. And you see where it says note? Let me go to where it says note. You see this right here? Yeah. Where it says notes? Okay. Yeah, that's where you're going to fill in on your cool. details and stuff like that. But when we get to that part, that's where I help everybody. That's probably four, week four, week five. I'm like, hey, okay. this is what you're going to have. This is what your details, X, Y, and Z. Simple. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have a single pole switch controlling four of our lights inside of our residential home. All right. Dining room. Okay. Dining room. Let's see. Let me make this longer. Okay. All right. So we're gonna put light. We're gonna put plug here. Plug here. All right. And then we're gonna have one. We're gonna have a fluorescent light. Let's put a fluorescent light. Fluorescent light is this. It's in your um, your paper, but this is a fluorescent light. I could have put a fluorescent light in here if I wanted to. I act just like a rectangle, huh? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Now, let's put a backyard light here, a back porch light, okay? Put GFCI. I put a GFCI in the backyard. In the NEC, it states that you gotta have at least two plugs on on the exterior of the home. One in the front, one in the rear. GFCI protected. I didn't even put one up here. GFCI. And on this um, this printout that you gave us, it says weather protected. Do we have to note that as well? Yes, weather protected. Is it like a, a box? Uh, weather protected. Just, oh, you, oh, you got the printout. Yeah. yeah. It has to be weather protected. Like, so, so open and close. Put that on the. Yeah, you could. You could. You don't have to put it right here. Uh -huh. You can put it on in your notes. You can basically say it on the where it says notes. You can say uh, exterior plugs for home are weather protected. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's kind of, kind of like a common sense thing. If it's outside. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Is that light control? Is that light switch inside or outside? Uh. Oh, that's a good question. You can actually put it. You're right. You can actually put it on the inside. I don't know why the hell I got it on the outside. <laughs> on the back porch, I can see how. Yeah, 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 but normally they are on the inside, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're on the inside. That's my fault. All right. Put S right here. Yeah. So yeah, that's all. I just had to see both. That's all. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I have two, but majority of them are on the inside. All right. All right. Now we have the living room here. Okay, living room. Here. Let's put a plug, all right, right here, plug right here, let's put another plug right here, let's put, uh, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a living room, I'm gonna put a ceiling fan like, Light. I know, right? A light. Uh, well, I, don't, I don't even feel like that. It's the fluorescent light in the living room right next to it. 
In the dining room? Yeah. The dining room, really. All right, so now, let me put, uh, let me put the words back on there because I'm recording. Uh, dining room. Let's see, there's like a floor receptacle. And that's if you want to put that in there. Yeah. You can't. Mm -hmm. Giving the arrow to go out there. Hall. All right. Now, this basics of general. All right, now what we're going to do, our next step is, our next phase, is to determine the action amount of current for each plural receptacle and how many circuit breakers we're going to have for this home. All right, so now let me pause the video because I want to bring up the 180 VA on the TV screen. All right. All right, so now, all right, check this out. Let's get through this so we can get the heck up on out of here. All right, so in the NEC, each receptacle has a value, all right, that you have to calculate the voltage by to determine how much current. You don't just come up with anything. You're like, oh, you know, I'm going to plug my microwave in. I'm going to plug my lamp or my floor heater. It doesn't work that way. <clears throat> The NEC states that every receptacle, okay, receptacle outlet is, is found in Article 220, all right, which is branch circuit feeders and service load calculation, all right. There's a few of them. It says receptacle outlets in letter I, okay, except as covered in 220.14 J and K, receptacle outlets should be calculated at not less than 100. In 80 volt amperes for each single or for each multiple receptacle on a yoke. A yoke is basically two plugs. Two plugs you buy it at the uh, Home Depot, that's a yoke. A little metal clamp, you got two plugs, that's a yoke. 180 VA, all right? So for each single or for each multiple receptacle on a yoke, a single piece of equipment consists of a multiple receptacle comprised of four or more receptacles, that's a quadplex. A quadplex, we have one right here, y'all don't see it. That's what they say. A four is a quadplex. It says not less than 90 VA. So a quadplex would be 90 VA, but that's still 180 because 90 plus 90 is 180, right? But anyway, 180. So look here. So with that magical number that I just read out, 180 VA, all right, what we're going to do, we're going to determine how much current, the calculated part, right? So the calculated part is basically saying, hey, this is the calculated number that you use to calculate. It's not saying you can't go over 180 uh, VA. It's saying to calculate. So if I got one receptacle, what is the voltage in our home? What is the voltage in our home? In our home? 120, right? Yeah. All receptacles is 120, right? So if we have 180 VA, which is 180 watts, what is the calculated amps for each receptacle? Ohm's law, fellas. Yeah, watt is divided by voltage. All right, and that value is? Is? 1.5. 1.5. So each receptacle, okay, let's write that down because I can't, can't keep this in my head. I ain't young no more. All right, so I'm going to put it right here. 180 VA, okay, I'm going to put four receptacles. I'm going to put it in the parentheses somewhere. Okay, four receptacles. Four receptacles. All right, so 180, okay, divided by 120 volt gives us 1.5 amps. That's, that's the potential for the pass. That is the, uh, the calculated value, okay? I'm gonna get to it, all right? 1.5 amps for 
each receptacle. You know how many receptacles you can have on, like a on a circuit breaker. Right. There you go. So that's where we're going next. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what we're about to do. So now, <clears throat> let's determine how many amps potentially uh, 180 VA divided by 120 volt, 1.5 amps for each receptacle. So let's count how many receptacles that we have in our practice home. Hmm. All right. We have even GFCI, not the 240. Not 240, not the 240 plus. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You count the 240. I always make the mistake. All right. You have, you have 14. Oh, let me stop that over. Let me stop that over. Okay, y'all can count. I mean, if I'm confused about count a lot, y'all can count to y'all All right, let me do this. All right, I'm going to do it at the top. I'm going to go to the top, then I'm going to swing my way around. Okay. Four. Okay. Five. Six. Seven. No, 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 not seven. Six. Seven, right here. Seven. Okay. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, okay, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Did I count these right here? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's, I count 27. 27. What, what do y'all have? Do you have the two right side? Yes, I did. I got 32. You got 32? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that, this is real critical. This is real critical. Let me so let me use a red pen. Let me stop this being just, Oh, this is just receptacle. I did my own. I, I don't oh no, that's fine. Okay, okay. okay. I'm, I'm gonna mark it with a red pen. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, okay, 27, 28. I got 28. 28, make sure I got everything okay. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go with the number 28, right? 28 for, for what we got on the board. Y'all might have more. That's fine. Okay. All right. So I have a total of 28 receptacles. All right. So now <clears throat> this is how you organize and structure your panel. So therefore it won't be all janky and messed up because I, I did a lot of electrical work and I see where some guys have receptacles from the same room on two different circuit breakers, receptacles and lights on GFCI circuit breakers. Like, man, but you got to do it the right way. But when you're building a, 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 a developmental, um, site and you know time is money so they going in and knock that out in one day but if you do a custom home where it's just you and a crew and you're taking your time then you can actually organize it to where it's nice and neat but when you go to these big developmental uh neighborhoods and they, time is money they put that up in one day you know they probably put two or three or four five six homes up in one day so they don't really have time but when you go as a homeowner and you go through your uh, stuff like damn all this is messed up look at the panel and the electrical inspector you know, they're along with that crew. So they're doing the bare minimum just to pass, to keep on going, the time is money. Nevertheless, I digress. All right, so we have 28, all right? So 28, so 28 times 1.5 amps. And that's gonna give us an idea how many uh, amps we're working with. Okay, so 1.5 times 28, all right, I got 42, okay? I got 42 amps, 42 amps. All right, now, got 42 amps. Now, in our homes, majority of the homes that come with 20 amp circuit breakers, or sometimes you have 15 amp circuit breakers, right? So, 
20 amp circuit breaker. So by just looking at that number, how many circuit breakers are we gonna run? Gonna need three. 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 Gonna need three. Three 20 amp breakers. Go 15, you got what? 15, 30, yeah, feel three. Okay. <coughs> anyway, we're gonna use a 20 amp circuit breaker. Would you rather shoot above or the like or what you calculated for? So say you got 42. You wouldn't want to use 45, but three. 15. Well, 15. Yeah. Now that's the thing. Is that too you close? could, like Cutler Hammer, Cutler Hammer, all that uh, circuit breaker, a 20 amp circuit breaker. Uh huh. 20 amp. GE got 15, 20 amp circuit breaker. I know Square D have 15 amp circuit breaker and 20 amp. But if you go with Cutler Hammer, which is E, all their breakers minimum are 20 amp circuit. Do they have 15? Yeah, they do have them out there. But for residential homes, from what I've done, I've done over 65. Yeah, I keep track of all my stuff. I've been over 65 residential homes since uh, since 2020, and all the Cutler Hammer circuit breakers are 20. Amp. But that goes whatever uh, manufacturer service panel you use. So yeah, to answer your question, Ms. Lopez, if you use a 15 amp circuit breaker, we know that 40. You know, so it'll be what 15, 30, 45. All right, and then for this one right here, it'll be 20 amp. 20 amp is 40, then you can use another 20 amp. But with that third 20 amp circuit breaker, you can probably put other stuff on there, like lights okay. and stuff like that, yeah. to fulfill that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So now we have 28 times 1.5 gives us 42 amp. All right. Now, <clears throat> circuit breakers only for the general lights and the plugs. Okay. We got, uh, let me see. Well, I want to start erasing some stuff. Um, can I erase this right here? Okay. All right. All right. So we have 20 amp circuit breakers. All right. How many do we need? But now we gotta, we gotta paint just willy nilly. How many in that kitchen serves? What does it say? How many? What's the bare minimum? From what we read earlier. It said two. Y'all remember that? It said the minimum of appliances that serves a uh, kitchen. Let me, let me refresh our memory. So on your appliances, do you want to put those on a dedicated circuit? No, uh, the dedicated circuit serves as like for a garbage disposal or dishwasher, but mm -hmm. stuff that goes into the kitchen that we know uh, is like the microwave, it could be for like a coffee pot or a toaster or stuff like that. Like refrigerators, they're, sometimes they are all on dedicated circuits for themselves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll find them on with the light. It depends. So right now I'm going to show you exactly how to organize. But you remember what we read? <coughs> Does the fridge have to be on a GFCI if it's got no, like water? No, you, you don't want your fridge on a GFCI. Why? Because the way the GFCI, it, it, it detects an influx of current as it already grabbed the solar. When, they, when the refrigerator turns on that, the harmonic compressor, it, it spikes, right? So the GFCI is not going to trip, right? GFCI is a smart device. It'll basically catch the current that already running at 8 amps. All right, when it shuts off <clears throat> and then it's picked back up and spike again, it can potentially spike higher than what it initially was the, the first time around. But to answer your question, you do not want to put a refrigerator on a GFCI because that is, <clears throat> that's a motor compressor. Mm -hmm. All right, it's not like it's a wet area. So no, you do not, that's standard. You don't want to put a GFCI, a plug or refrigerator on a GFCI. But you don't want your microwave, garbage disposal. On the same thing, we same circuits. Yeah. Everything comes on board. Yeah, and that's why they say the minimum two 20 amp circuit breakers, okay. minimum going into the kitchen. And you know, we got all this stuff right here. All right. So now, let's figure out okay, we got 28 receptacles. All right. So we got at least have two. We got two of them that's going into the small appliance, which is the kitchen. All right. So let's see. Let me. Um, I want to break this down. Okay. Four kitchen. Okay. Now it's not telling you like, hey, you can't have this amount. You can have, you know, you have 42 slots or 40 slots in the circuit breaker, right? 
you can have as many, they said the minimum is two, and then whatever as you determine what needs to be served for a circuit breaker to protect, you can do however many you want. All right, you can have, hey, you know what? I'm gonna put bedroom one on this own circuit breaker. I'm gonna put bedroom two on this own circuit breaker. I'm gonna put the master bedroom on this own circuit breaker. I'm gonna just put the plugs for the master bedroom on this own circuit breaker, but I'm gonna put the lights on its own circuit breaker as well. If you got money like that, and you're wasting the uh, boss man's money like that, you're gonna find yourself another job, but you have to figure out what to do, all right? And that's what we're about to do right now, just for the general lights and plugs. All right. so this is going to take a little bit. Is the laundry enough on its own then? Yeah, the laundry circuit breaker is on its own, but that's what it said. The laundry circuit breaker is on its own. Okay, So I'm going to put that down too. This is the minimum. I can have three, I can have four, but the minimum. Okay, I'm going to put one circuit breaker, 120 amp, CB, four laundry. All right. And that's for, okay. All right, so now we're doing plugs right now. We got 28, all right, let me get back to it. So now we figure out, okay, we can do it in squares. We can do it in quadrants, okay? You can be like, okay, I can put this half on the plugs we're talking about that are not the laundry and that are not the, uh, the bathroom and the kitchen. You can put this half on one circuit breaker and then you can put this half on one circuit breaker. Or you can put the front part of the house of the plugs on one circuit breaker and then you can put the back part of the house. It's the, it depends on what's best and what you can organize. Y'all catch my grip on what I'm saying? Not really? Okay. All right, so let's see here. So I would do bedroom one and bedroom two, okay? And okay, so let's look at here. I'm gonna do bedroom one and bedroom two. So right now I got eight, four, eight. These are the plugs. Those are eight receptacles, right? Eight receptacles, eight times 1.5 is what? Come on in. Should be six, I think. No, mm -hmm. 10. 10 amps, so you see, we, we already reached, how many amps we reached? 12, it's 12. 12. 12, okay, so we reached 12 amps, right? You know, we use a 20 amp circuit breaker, 20 amp circuit breaker, it trips at 80%. You see all this stuff that we gotta accommodate and account for? So a circuit breaker, residential circuit breaker, the circuit breaker, they will trip at 80% of their load, okay? That's how they operate, all right? Y'all learned that uh, on a big scale. Uh, when well, I'm, I'm asking, I'm teaching this class. When y'all were in um, testing and maintenance, or what class that was when y'all test the, the, the big switch gear? We're doing that We're now. in that class right now. Damn, okay, I thought y'all, okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. All right, y'all gonna learn that, my bad. All right, but anyway. Breaks trip is 80% residential. That's standard. Find in the book. But anyway, all right. So right now we have eight. We're already at 12 amps. Now y'all see what we're doing? Now we had 12 amps already with eight receptacles. Hmm. Do I want to put the hallway lights? The hall, I'm sorry, not lights. Do I want to put the hallway plugs on there, right? You you calculate. You gotta calculate. So we're already at 12 amps with these eight. Okay? One, two, that's what? It's three. It's three amps, so three amps plus what? 12 is 15, right? Right, I'm, I'm asking y'all, yeah. right? So now we can put bedroom two plugs, bedroom one, bedroom one, bedroom two, and these hallway plugs on 120 amp breaker. Y'all see what we're doing? All right, all right. So, But this right here will be, it'll be split up in half. It won't be two, but this is pretty much like right now the schedule. So 120 amp circuit breaker for bedroom one, I'm gonna abbreviate it, bedroom one and two and hallway, hallway plug. Hallway. And this is just for the receptors, not yeah, the lights. Not the lights, only the receptors. That's why you got 40. That's why you have 40 uh, breaker slots, okay? The uh, hallway. Okay, bedroom one, bedroom two, hallway, and this is, let me put a uh, plug, only plug. Okay. okay. 
All right, let me erase this here. All right, so we got bare room one and two. All right, so now let's look at. All right, we're gonna leave the master bare room alone because I might put the lights and the plug on it by itself. I'm gonna come back to that because the bathroom, the bathroom plug kind of be by itself, and the laundry is already by itself. All right. It's in the NEC that the bathroom plug has to be by themselves. Okay, for, for bathroom. All right, so one, and it states it right here. Let me go back now. I'm going to want to tell y'all about what I'm showing y'all. Mm -hmm. All receptacle must be on GSM only 12 and at least one receptacle must be installed. All receptacle must be in, okay. Uh, no other device allowed on the bathroom. See? No other device allowed on the bathroom receptacle unless the dedicated 20 amp circuit supplies only one bathroom. Example, lights and vent fans. Let's read that again. Let's, let's break this down. So we, we're, we're, we're learning. We're learning what, what you can and can't do. No other device allowed on the bathroom receptacle circuit unless the dedicated 20 ounce supply is one bathroom. Okay, so we only got one bathroom on this one here. Okay, well, we couldn't put the lights. That's what they're saying, right? Hold on, let me read it. Let me decipher it again. It says, no other device allowed on the bathroom receptacle circuit unless the dedicated 20 amp circuit supplies only one. So basically, yeah, example, lights and vents. So yes, yeah, so basically that's telling you if you have multiple bathrooms, okay, then that dedicated circuit breaker is only for that bathroom. But if you got one, uh, if you got one bathroom, which we have one bathroom, then we can put our light and our fan on now. All right, cool. All right, so therefore we know that. All right. So it's right. gonna be those the one yeah. VSCR receptacle, the light, and the. And, and that and that exhaust fan, I gotta figure out the amp for the, for the exhaust fan. I didn't even do that, but we'll figure it out. I'll probably have to go Google it. But the lights, the lights, uh, they got a, a rating as well, okay? Is there different different rules now with like low use, like LED lights yes, and whatnot? Are. are there different rules now as far as like how many you can have? I mean, of course, how many you can have, you, you, you do that by calculating, but the, the consumption of energy or the consumption of the current it is different for the LED, and that's in your 2020 book. You know, it's in there. All right, so let's stick with the plugs, okay? Okay. All right, so bedroom, master bathroom. Okay, we already did Okay, let, let's do the so that's already obvious, right? All right, so the kitchen. The kitchen, okay, 220 amp circuit breakers for the kitchen. All right, the dining room. Okay, let's look at the dining room and the living room. We probably, we probably can put the dining room and the living room on a plug together. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six times 1.5 is? Nine. Nine. Okay. Nine. Nine. okay. So you got six times 1.5, which you said is nine? Nine. Okay. All right. So one circuit breaker, 120 amp. Okay, CB or dining room. Living room. And outside. Just the back one, right? Yes, sir. All right. So just plug. All right. Okay, we got that covered. Okay. Can we put the lights on there as well, then? You could. For the living room and the dining room? Yeah, yeah you could. But we got to figure out the current for the lights and stuff like that. But I'm going to do that in a little bit. They might do it next week. I'm kind of tired. But anyway, <laughs> all right. Um, man, let's, but I want to figure I want to finish it off, though. All right. So we did bedroom one. We did bedroom two. Okay, let's look at our master bedroom. Okay, so we have 
one, two, three, four. Four times 1.5 is what? Eight. Plus the DFC out in front. You said what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The master barrel, one, two, three, four. And let's put, put in the, uh, the GFCI, the GFCI, all right? So that's five, right there. So five mm -hmm. times 1.5 is what? 7.5. Huh? 7.5. 7.5. What about the, the, you know, the breaker for the longer? That's for that. That's for itself. That, that's for the 240 though, right? No, well, that's, that's for, for the laundry room. Has that's, for, that's for the laundry, that's, that's for the actual plug, the GFCI plug itself. Okay, and so they're not yeah. gonna go on this master. Right? Yeah, but no, nah, okay. it's not gonna go on the master. I mean, not gonna go on that. Cause let, let's see why. Instead of me just telling you, let's look at it. Okay, laundry, let's see what the laundry say. That's why I put that on here. Okay, it says dedicated 20 amp circuit required for laundry receptive outlet. No other device allowed. On the circuit breaker. You see that, Mr. Same, uh, so it's the same as the bathroom where it's yeah. got to be. Yeah, but no, look at that. It's up there. It's different. It, it says, it is same with the exception if you got one laundry room, because most houses only have one laundry room. It says, no other circuit. No other, uh, nothing else should go on. It says 210.52F. Okay? So even though it's one plug in there, it's only circuit. You can put anything in there. You can put a, uh, you can put a vacuum cleaner in there and, and run it. You can probably put a heater in there. But they're saying, hey, laundry is only for, for itself. That's not talking about the 240-volt plug, neither. Look at, two, look at look what it says, uh, Mr. Greco. See what it says, 250.142B? It's a 4-wire 30-amp circuit breaker required for electric drive. That's totally different from the calculations of having all of those that, that circuit breaker dedicated for the laundry. The circuit breaker that's dedicated for the laundry is dedicated for the laundry. That's it. It's not talking about the dryer. The dryer is a dedicated circuit that's happened to be in the laundry room. Okay. All right. All right. So master bedroom. Okay. You got four, five. Okay. Now, this is not the end of all of them, right? So once we calculate this, once we start doing the lights, we can feel like, oh, we got enough room to put the lights on the plug receptacle, right? Or you go to your panel and be like, okay, I didn't use one, two, three, four, five, right? I didn't use five slots already, and I got, if we're using a 40 space, you got 35 left. So you got to be able to know if, how many space you have left, and determine if you want to put the lights onto the plug receptacles themselves, or if you want to put the lights on an individual. But be mindful though, you got to do a dryer, you got to do an oven if it's a 240 oven, the trash compactor, the refrigerator, some plugs of water here, you know, double pump. So you got to be mindful. So therefore, when you do go to these homes and they have the lights on the plug, that's okay because it's a law. But if if it's a small home, then you can probably, not a small, if it's a big home, you got a big panel, what I like, no, I'm saying that now. Anyway, this is what we do. We basically try to figure out with the amount of space, normally, typically it's 40 spaces, so you're gonna have to use double pole breakers for 240 uh, equipment, and then you're gonna have lights and plugs. If you have enough space to differentiate and separate the plug from the light, you can do so. But if you don't have enough space available, to separate the lights and the plug, then guess what, gentlemen? You're gonna have to put the lights into the plug circuit breaker. Y'all follow what I'm saying now? All right, all right, all right, all right. Shut up. <clears throat> ceiling fan. Let's see how many watts. Let's see how many uh, watts of ceiling fan is. I gotta go Google this. This is not silver stone in the EDC. It can be any kind. Okay. Oh. Bitch, it says seventy five watts. All right. An average ceiling fan consumes approximately 75 watts of electricity. This may vary according to the size of the brand. All right, so we're going to say that light 
and that ceiling fan is 75 watts. The reason I do that because I'm going to put the whole master bedroom on its own circuit breaker. Right, the lights and the ceiling fan? Yeah, the light and the ceiling fan. What are your reservations? Because that's the that 75 watts is for just the fan. Or you say we're putting in like LEDs uh, or something that don't take uh, up a lot of. What is the normal watt of a residential ceiling fan with light? Seventy-five. Let's take it at phase value. Seventy-five. All right. Seventy-five. All right. So. This right here is 75 watts, so we're going to add it in. We're going to do our calculation, all right? So we got one, two, three, four. We're going to put that five, okay? We was at 7.5. Uh, Mr. Ethan said 7.5, so that's 7.5 amps. 75 watts divided by 120. Can somebody figure that out for me? 75 watts. 0. 0.625. 0. 0.625. Thank you. All right? So that's 0. 0.625. I'm not going to write this on the board. 0.625 plus 7.5 gives us what? 8.125. 8.125. And we're going to, okay, could we add more stuff on that? Yeah, we could. But for right now, we're going to just say, hey, circuit breaker for the master bedroom is 8 is going to be drawn uh, potentially. This is calculated. It's not drawn uh, 1.5 watts from the plug because we, we don't have nothing in there. But this is for the calculation purposes. All right, so 8.15. All right, so let's go ahead and put the master bedroom. Okay, I'm going to label it. Okay. It's 20 amp. CB or master bed. Okay. The front view of CR. Yep. Master bed, um, and I'm going to put master bed, plug, I'm going to put plugs and light. Okay, even though I put plugs, I'm gonna put light of uh, the plug and the fan. Okay, and you say the front, front plug, front exterior, front exterior. Exterior plug. What about the uh, the outdoor light? Oh, we're gonna put that in the yeah, I, I haven't I haven't done lights yet, but since I was like it was by itself, I was like, hey, what the hell? I might as well put that on there. Okay. But this is I'm giving you the idea, the concept that later on we could probably put lights on these breakers that we made for the plug if we got if we got the amount of calculated space. When I say calculated space, meaning that if it's 8.15 that we calculated for this 120 amp for the max bedroom. Can we afford to put more lights on that? Yeah, because we got up into 20 amps, but 20 amp circuit breakers, they trip at 16. So 8.15 from 16, that's about almost eight amps that we have left of calculated space. All right, so I'm just showing you the plug. Yeah, this is a process. This is a process, but they got Excel and all that stuff, so you gotta worry about all this. But guess what, if you're doing a startup company and you, and you got a blank Excel spreadsheet and you ain't gotta, you gotta do all of this on Excel to figure out, okay, this is that formula, this, 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 that, you gotta calculate it. And then once you get it going, when you do your job five years from now, you'll thank yourself for day one that you did the hard work, all right? All right, all right, so what we have? We got the bathroom, okay. No, I don't have a bathroom. I don't have a master bathroom. bathroom. All right, that's why I said we were going to calculate that. So let's figure out. So, no, we didn't do the master bathroom. I said we were going to put that exhaust fan and the GFCI on there. Yeah, okay. But, so let me do this. I thought we already did. Master bathroom, receptacle, light, like the bed. Oh, uh, bathroom, bedroom, one, laundry, kitchen. Uh huh. Well, everything. We didn't do the uh, master bedroom, but the, it's already understood that a, a, a master bathroom. Oh, the bathroom is on its own circuit breaker. All right. So I was just trying to calculate it. So we know that one plug is 1.5, and then you got the exhaust fan. I need to show y'all the, the amperage of an exhaust fan. The exhaust fan, the light, and I got to show you the light. Uh, the light. But we're going to do the lights. Uh, we're going to probably do that next week. All right. But the exhaust fan, let me uh, plug that in. Let me figure out what's the uh, normal watts of an exhaust fan. Five 
general bathroom exhaustion requires 30 to 40 watts of power. And this is the same amount of power as a 40 watt light bulb. So exhaustion is only cool, let's say we want to the higher end, or we can, we can Aren't they done off the size of the bathroom? What do you mean? The exhaustion. Um, we do a calculator. We, we, we're sticking a calculator. We gotta determine what we can place on a circuit breaker. Okay, now that's the size of the bathroom. So this is in the board. Go ahead, what you saying? The size of the exhaust fan is based on the size of the bathroom. So if you have a smaller bathroom, you're not going to have oh, fans pulling a ton of power. Yes, yes, I apologize. That's why, that's why I was asking yeah. about yeah. if we're doing yes. like tiny homes, that thing. Oh, I don't have the, we don't have the dimensions of anything. Right, in general. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. yes, sir. All right, so y'all want to use 40? 30 between 50, let's use 40, right? So the exhaust fan is 40, let's say it's 40 watts. 40 watts yeah. divided by 120 is? 0.33. 0.33? Maybe. That's about five. Real small. I know it's small. You said it was 40 divided by? Yeah, 40 divided by 120. 0.333. Yeah, you're right. All right. So our exhaust fan, let me put that on the board. Let me notate it. The exhaust fan. Okay. Okay. It is, we're going to say, so the fan, what did we say the fan was? 75 watts? Okay. This right here is 40 watts. Okay which is 0.33 amps. All right, all right, thank you. All right, so um, bathroom, we're gonna put only what it says. We're gonna put the light, you're gonna put the GFCI, and we're gonna put the exhaust fan. So we're gonna put one 20 amp CB or, uh, I'm not gonna say math, I'm gonna one bathroom. Bathroom, the bath, plugs and light, plug, light, and exhaust fan. We'll put EF, EF exhaust fan. Okay, all right. Mm, what, while we're going about to just say what the lights were going to be? I know I have one over here. I'll probably, I'll probably do that as well next week. Okay. Yeah, because it's, it's a lot. Like, next week I'm going to be hitting this. Let me see. Hold on, let me see. I'm trying to think. I know I got to go over the dryer. I got to go over that other stuff. It might carry on the three weeks of lecture on it. But still, y'all. But anyway. Uh, lights. Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead and knock these lights out, man. All right. So I think we have everything. Okay? For the plugs. Kitchen, two 20 amp circuit breakers. Okay, so we got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got seven circuit breakers, seven 20 amp circuit breakers. One for the master bedroom, I mean, one for the master bedroom and the front exterior of light. Okay, these are plugs. Okay, we have uh, GFC. Yeah, we got a 20 amp CB for the bathroom plugs and exhaust fan and the lights. Okay. We have a 20 amp CB for the dining room and the living room and outside plug, okay? We got a 20 amp CB for bedroom one and two and the hallway plugs. And then we have one 20 amp circuit breaker for the laundry, all right? And I ain't talked about the dedicated circuit like the, the, the uh, like the dryer and whatnot like that. We're gonna get to that later. All right, now it's for light. Now, let me say this. Now, your light. See, we're in the new age LED lights. So let me put what is the normal wattage of a residential LED, LED light? 10 watts, and that's, and that's correct. 10 watts. It's that small, okay? So 10 divided by 120, that's what 0.083. That's 80. That's 83 million. That's real small. So 83 million. Let's see how many lights we have. All right. We have a total of. I didn't count. I'm gonna have to do this one by. I'm gonna have to calculate this one. Anyway, we got one, two, one, two, three, four. Now that laundry light 
It didn't say light, it said plug. Nothing else was on the plug. The light was not on the plug when we calculated. It's the FY, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. But we remember we put that bathroom on there, right? We ain't got to count that one. We put that, that bathroom light on that plug for the bathroom because you remember we put it on there, the exhaust fan. All right? So we got a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 11. Right. And I gotta count this so I gotta see how many watts is for a fluorescent bulb. That's a fluorescent bulb. 83 million? Yeah, it's 83 million, right? But hold on, let me uh, count for residential. Huh? Oh. Okay, uh, uh, residential fluorescent. Fluorescent. That's even smaller. 8 to 16 watts. Let's stick with 10. Let's stick with 10. Okay? So this right here, let's count this one as well. That's 10. So that's 11, 12. All right. So 12 times 8, uh, 0 0.8 times 12. Uh, 996 million. Yeah. It's not even, that's not even an amp. So could we put the, huh? Put the now you're thinking. Now you're thinking. Now you're thinking. And that's what a true mass electrician or electrical engineer would do. All right? So now, we got 12 lights, including this. Ceiling fan. They are rated at 75 watts. So one, two, okay. So, okay, hold on. I didn't even count this one. One, two, three. Go okay. three. The master ceiling fan we put on the master circuit. No, we didn't. Hey, you met? I put the master. No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad, my bad, my bad. Okay. So we got one, two, plus 12, that's 14. How many amps you said it was? 2.25 amps. 2.25 amps, right? That's for all 11 lights and the two ceiling fans. 12 lights. 12 lights and the two ceiling fans. Yes, right? We don't know amps. Now that's at the phase where, okay, I want to put these lights on the low hanging fruit, meaning, or the low hanging, uh, not low hanging, but the low amp circuit breakers that we calculate. You could do that. Or, so, go ahead. So this is how you end up with, uh, you don't have like something will trip in the kitchen and then the light in the closet across the house goes <laughs> out. Because fucking yes, but as a great electrician, really master, sense, yeah. yeah, as a great master electrician or electrical engineer, you have to design it to where, okay, now you, could you put all of the lights and ceiling fans on one circuit breaker? You could, but you're gonna piss somebody up that's gonna come by and do service work and be like, oh, some old lady with cats, she's like, oh, my, uh, my light went out, right? And he's like, okay, where did it go off at? It went off in the, uh, I think it went off in the kitchen, but when she checked, well, he checked, it's for every light in the goddamn house. And he gonna be like, oh man, who, who the hell wired this up, right? That's where a great, you know what I'm saying, a uh, mass electrician or a living man has to determine. Even though the amount of light amps doesn't even equate to even three amps, but you need to section it off. Now, since we already have these here, right? Set up. Now, we got a total of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, I know the laundry, you can't put a light on there. You can't put a light on there for the plug, because it says you can't. So we know that we can put the light from the laundry onto the master bedroom, right? The master bedroom. So how many amps did we get? So did anybody keep up with the calculation? Because I did. Okay. Uh, how many amps we put? So let's look at the master bedroom. We have uh, we have uh, the front plug, we have the ceiling fan, the ceiling fan is 75 watts, and we have the master uh, bedroom plug. So how many amps are we pulling? So we got one, two, three, four. That was the 8.125. Yes, 8.125, 8 right? All right, so now we can put 
the light from the laundry. These are lights now. The light from the laundry, we can put it on there, all right? Or we can basically put these three lights on there. But you got to be smart about it. You got to be smart about it. What I would do, I would section it off. Lights for the laundry, let me go ahead and tack that in to the master barrel. So I would just basically make more space on my schedule and say laundry light. Or well, like the, the lights for the kitchen and the dining room, can't you? Couldn't you throw those on one of the Absolutely. kitchen circuits? Yes, can we put on what? One of the... So the plugs, right? Yeah, one of the kitchen circuits. Yeah, so put a... Okay, where, where are we at? So the dining room. circuits for the kitchen. Yeah, and well, I'm going to ask you a question. Let's say the dining room, uh, living room, and plug. Can we put the ceiling fan and the lights on here? Yes, you can, okay? If it's enough. If you get the room. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. amount of space. All right. So you can put the ceiling fans and the receptacles on the same. Yeah. Area, right. Yeah, but what so I did was section it. I, I I did it in phases first to see how many we pull it, right. and then we'll be able to tap on the light to these existing if it's not beyond that threshold of 16 amps. Right. From a 20 amp circuit breaker. All right. All right. What time is it, fellas? Okay. Do you do y'all want to finish up the lights and do it now, or do y'all want to? Finish it up next week because it's going to take two whole days to finish calculating and showing y'all this so y'all can be prepared to do this on your own. Yeah, now I can use some food. I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah, this, that's, yeah, yeah. I can see y'all, 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 your brains are oozing out. So Greco, Greco, he's still ready to go. Anyway, it's, 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 it's that extra 30 minutes of sleep. <laughs> 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 but anyway, but y'all see this now. All right, so, Y'all see this? This takes a lot of time to do. That's why every time I do electrical design, I need to ground hard. Every semester I teach this. I don't do the normal, oh, the syllabus, hey, we're gonna learn this, we got like 30 minutes. Nah, design, that's why I get five weeks. Anyway, so let's pick up, let me write this on the board, okay? Let's pick up on light. So next week, next week, okay. What day is next week? What date? What's today's date? Next week is going to be the 18th. The 18th. The 18th. The 18th, right? Yeah, thank you. Extra 30 minutes. Okay, next week, we're going to cover light calculation. Okay, we're going to cover. Um, we're going to cover the, uh, uh, the dryer. Next we're going to cover the fixed appliances. Fixed appliances. Hold on, hold on. Next we're going to cover the, uh, the AC. Okay. Next we're going to cover the dry stove top. Uh -oh. uh, okay, and then we're gonna cover the the, the service conductors. Service. Service conductors. So it might take three weeks to uh, to, to, to do all this. Service conductors, service conductors, size and whatnot. Alright, I know that. Alright, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do light, dry. Fixed appliances, the AC unit, the stove top, and then the service conductor. The service conductor is going to uh, have uh, the grounding wire, the ground there, which is the neutral wire of the size of the circuit breaker for the whole house, uh, and the size of the circuit breaker. Yeah. Circuit breaker for the whole house, and the size of the, the conductor for the whole house. All right, so that's a lot. So it might carry on for three weeks, but even though it is three weeks, I still have two full weeks to finish up the final project. Alright, so hold on, before, before I we go. I had to stand up, my leg. Oh, no, 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 I'm not telling you. What we learned, what we learned, what we learned. Shoot. Look at that. I'm going to A lot. Where you put the outlets? <laughs> calculate each load of a circuit breaker. I mean, total. Flags, you think that, that, that always went in my head. I was like, how do they know how much to put on one? Yeah, so that's breaker. what we're doing right now. That's All right. my dad asked me that same question, and I was like, I haven't got to that bar yet. Now you'll be able to tell. You'll be able to tell. All right, fellas. So uh, 11 o'clock. I'm sorry. 1 o'clock. We're going to start transforming.
Transformers gonna be one of those pages we're gonna do invitation, you know, tell y'all what books to purchase, and then that's gonna be it. Then next week, that's because Transformers is one of those classes where you can actually do it page by page. But this right here, you gotta take advantage of all of the time that we have. Is it gonna be the same book we got last semester, Motors and Transformers? No, they got a lab name. Okay. So, uh, no. You'll see how Transformers is. Transformers is one of those fun activity lab classes, yeah. but our first lab is going to be next week. Yeah. Alright, folks, so I'm going to get y'all some breakfast. I know y'all need it, and I'll see y'all at 1 o'clock.